Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Ready for victory and warfare? All glory. When you know, the Father searches those who will worship in truth and spirit. There's not anything greater than worshiping the Lord, man. And that's what the enemy's trying to prevent from individuals is gathering together to worship. And he's doing it very well with this so-called plague and all kinds of rules and regulations influ influenced and enforced by the demonic rule. Hello? Glory. But I can tell you something very important. <clears throat> the last time we gathered together and worshipped, I saw something very powerful, and it was a, uh, it was a stream. And I shared with you a little bit about that. And it was a life stream, but it was a prophetic stream. And the Holy Spirit said to me, that was the river of life. And I thought, whoa. And he said, I am releasing, I'm, I'm increasing. This is coming from the throne of God. A river. It was light, but it was, I can't explain it. It was so bright and blue. It almost looked like lightning, but it was liquid. And it was offshoots coming off of it and it infiltrating in all countries and nations and, and places. And it was awakening. It was causing an ignition igniting and awakening it was intense you had to be there <laughs> so we are in a prophetic awakening awakening everybody said you're awakened some people are still asleep but slap them you know Romans 13 You know, we've called it this great awakening, but it's actually a prophetic awakening because God is releasing this awakening. Is everybody okay? Romans 13, glory. Did you get refreshed tonight? Not refreshed, right? Praise God. How many of you know you can get healed in God's presence? How many of y'all can get delivered in God's presence? But you got to get into his presence. <laughs> See, you can come and not get in his presence. You can watch everybody else get in and feel like a real moron. Oh, hi, look at everybody worshiping. You know, some people are very good in the outer court. Once they get to the holy place, they run because the demons in them can't handle it. And they call themselves spiritual. <laughs> Hello, we can all shout, we can all jump, we can all dance. That's outer court. But once you get into the holy and the holy holies, that's different. There's no more shouting, no more screaming, no more jumping. There's death. But yet there's life. <laughs> Romans 13, verse 8. Is everybody there? Is everybody, uh, I want to speak it together. Hallelujah. Was it say, owe no one anything except to what? Love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is anything other than another commandment, as I'll assume, a summing up in this one saying, Namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing that the time, that now is high time to what? Awake. Awake. Out of what? Sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and in envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its emotional desires called lust. Lust. This is a personal awakening. 
See, God is releasing a prophetic awakening, but there is a personal awakening that must be established before anything else can be awakened. And people are asleep, taken captive, bound, imprisoned by demonic forces. In Ephesians chapter 5, Heck, some of us have found ourselves in the pit when we got awakened. Whoa, how did I get here? But thank God you got awakened. Amen. Now we got to maintain this awakening. We got to maintain this alertness. We must maintain it because the enemy is out to put us to sleep. That's his job. It only takes one compromise to sink a boat. Ephesians 5, 8. This persuasion does what? Oh, I'm in Galatians, sorry. Hallelujah. All right, verse 8. For you were once what? Darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. I'm going to say it again. It's in what? Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Can you expose them if you're asleep? No. You may know they're there. Knowing something is there is not exposing it. Hello. Until you take dominion towards it, now you've exposed it. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you have fallen asleep, spiritual sleep. It's actually spiritual death. Arise from the what? Dead. And Christ, the anointing, will give you what? Light. To what? See. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the what? Fear, reverence, and honor and respect to the Lord. What's he saying? Awake from the demonic sleep. People are in trances. They're under mind control. They're getting triggered to do some strange things. He says, arise from the spiritual death. Connect to the presence of Christ. Sing for his presence to come. See, when you sing for his presence to come, then you reach into the depth of his presence, and the fear of the Lord wraps you wraps all around you. And that reverence and honor and respect is right there. But that's not in the outer court. That's in the holy of holies. Oh, glory. And what happens, and then this is a reality to you. It comes from a prophetic awakening. It's a revelation of him. It's not revelation knowledge. It's not a light bulb that goes off. This is revelation. He's revealing himself to you personally in another way. It's different. It's totally different. And this revelation is what put the restraints on. Strong. Why? What is the restraint? It's the fear of the Lord. The restraint is the, re is the fear of the Lord. Oh, glory. Prophetic awakening. Revelation 22. Hallelujah. Verse 4. 
verse 1. It says, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, which is the, that stream I was telling you about, that life stream, that prophetic stream. Clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 2. Speak it with me. In the middle of its streets and either, either side of the river was a tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were the, for the, what? Healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And His servants shall serve Him. They shall see His face. Hello? That's revelation. That's revealing. And His name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. This is what the river is doing. That stream is bringing a prophetic awakening. Why? So people can understand what's getting ready to happen and what's happening in their lives right now. The river of life is a prophetic stream released from the throne room of God the Father to ignite a prophetic awakening of His Son, Jesus the Christ, in people's hearts. Oh, hallelujah. It's one of the many end-time moves of God to draw the lost, the backslider, the deceived into His everlasting kingdom. It's called the Great Harvest. When there's a great awakening, there's a great harvest. In Matthew 24. Glory. Matthew 24 and verse 3. It's amazing how he keeps bringing us back to this. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things are going to be and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age of grace. And Jesus answered and said, to them, take heed that no one does what? Deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I'm Christ, and will deceive many. They'll come with doctrines of demons. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation. In other words, racism will increase. Kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, these will be the beginnings of emotional distresses. Does everybody get it? Sorrow is what? It's emotion, isn't it? He's warning us. All of these things are going to create many emotional distresses in people. And they won't even know that they'll be taken by them. Right now we see many emotional distresses releasing the atmosphere by demonic frequencies. What are they creating? Confusion, oppression, anger, unrest, hatred, promoting to the flesh, pride. All of these things that are happening right now. And what happens? With, you know, people, it causes people to search for a false fulfillment away from God's presence. But they don't know that. Why? Because Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. If they knew it, they wouldn't do it. Amen? Praise God. 
when what's, what's it doing? It's putting people to sleep. False fulfillment is putting people to sleep. Not even realize that they're distressed. Emotionally distressed, emotionally attacked. It's intense right now. It's, it's never been so influenced and so powerful and so combating than it has been now. You won't discern it if you ain't connected. You won't be sensitive to it if you're not connected. Everybody okay? Anybody okay? Praise God. Acts 10. If I'm moving too fast, I can't help myself. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a fast moving message. We're in the stream. <laughs> Glory. I'm canoeing right now. <laughs> Holy canoe. <laughs> Sounds like it's an instrument, doesn't it? Holy canoe. Psalm 37, Acts 10 37. I mean, verse 37. Told you I was cruising. I must have missed that sign. There it is. <laughs> Maybe I better go and reverse a little. <laughs> hey, it wakened you up, didn't it? Praise God. Psalm. Don't go to any psalm. Go to a verse, okay? Acts 10, verse 37. Glory. Maybe we better go to Psalm 37. <laughs> Let's speak it. Can we speak it? That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. What's oppressed? Is it a feeling? Is it emotion? Oh, snapping, yes. They were oppressed by the devil for God was with them. So what's he telling us? He said, listen, you want to break this off? It's through the anointing. Only the anointing. I don't care how much word you have. I don't care if you remember the page numbers. It's the anointing of God's presence. This is what the enemy is trying to prevent people from getting into. Oh, he loves when you're hanging out in the outer court. And maybe you put a couple of feet in now and now in the holy place. You know, you do the little tap in and out. One foot in, the other foot out, you know. But he don't want you diving into the holy of holies. Because he lost you. You are hidden from him when you're in the holy of holies. He can't see you. You're under, you're covered. You're undercover too. And when you come out, you're cloaked. Does everybody get this? Man, because you're saturated with the presence of God. You're off the enemy's radar now. There's no more beep. Hallelujah. The anointing is against the oppression and emotional distresses of the enemy. Revelation 12. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming my way. Praise God. It's a new season of what? Power and what? Prosperity. Yes. Prosperity. Glory. Anybody see the news today? I don't know if it was on the news. Was it? About that explosion and where was it? Beirut? Snap. It was a big snap. People were videoing this explosion. A building was on fire. I don't know what truly what was happening. 
And then all of a sudden this mushroom cloud came from an, an explosion. And they were videoing, and all of a sudden the, the wave hit them. <laughs> Buildings were destroyed. Looked like a mini nuclear bomb. I don't know, maybe it was one of ours that went all the way down. And then boom, boom. You know, we are attacking deep underground bases. Deep state, deep underground bases. And did you see about Australia now? Controlled by China. Yeah. So now they've opened their doors to China. I'm telling you that things are all over the world is such a mess. It's a mess. But thank God Jesus is coming. Thank God we're going home. Hallelujah. But we got work to do before we leave. Amen. Revelation 12. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet. And on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth birth. I want you to know right now the church is in a prophetic awakening to give birth into the world. We are about to give another birth. This is not being born again. It's a birthing through. This is what God is doing with the whole body. He's caused the body's pregnant big time. There's a birth of awakening that's going to spread like crazy. Then being with child, she cried out with labor and pain to give birth, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great... Uh, fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diamonds on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars or angels of heaven and threw them to the earth. And a dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now we know that this is multidimensional. Does everybody understand? She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then a woman fled into the wilderness. Hello. Where were we at? In the wilderness. Why? Because we're the voice, the cry from the wilderness and preparing for the Lord's return. But in this cry, we are giving birth. The enemy doesn't want us to birth what God is about to do big time. Is everybody okay? Then a woman fled into the wilderness where she was placed, prepared by God, that they should feed her there for 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So remember, look at the enemy is pursuing the body. So she doesn't give birth. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. Why? The power of his Christ is the only anointing is the only way to overcome. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. They did not love their lives to death. In other words, that is the law of the Spirit, isn't it? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has what? A short time. He knows that he has a short time. Let me tell you, you see everything exploding right now. Everything is exploding. All evil hands are on deck. <laughs> they're not hiding anymore. Like I said, they're no longer in the closet. They're on the front porch. Amen? They're on deck to kill as many humans while they are spiritually asleep or demonically induced comas. 
There are demonically induced comas and great deception through media, music, sports, and all. I mean, look at all the sports dudes that are now kneeling now. I don't. Even, I used to. Man, I was. A, I loved football. I, loved, I don't watch it on it more. I'm not watching any of those morons that are against this country. These guys make millions of dollars, and yet they got to kneel against this country and disrespect the flag. They need to move out of this country. And I ain't supporting it. Hallelujah. You got technology. You got, you know, there's so much rage and addiction, murder. Look at the, the education that's coming out. There's no more education anymore. It's indoctrination. Amen. You got beatings. I mean, they're just beating down humans tremendously. You know what? Everybody can be cured of this whole plague thing, but they're holding it back. But you got righteous doctors that are telling people all about it, where you can go. Listen, if you're sick, go to your doctor. If your doctor's not willing to prescribe the antidote to get healed, go to another one because that person's an antichrist. Does everybody get this? They got the cure. Jesus. Comes in the Bible. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? But we are warriors. We are ready to invade and rescue. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 4. Second Timothy chapter four. I told you I found a cure. A lot of chlorine and sun. <laughs> I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, Worship me, okay. I went out into the sun. Lord, you're awesome. Praise God. Rest. Cook. Fry me. Flip me. Turn me into a pancake. I don't care what you do. Second Timothy 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Chlorine and sun. Praise God. It's a prescription from heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. In other words, preaching a word means you're decreeing and changing your atmosphere. Does everybody get it? You're changing your atmosphere. So after you come out of the presence of God, the word of God should always be on your lips, ready to shoot, ready to decree, ready to release. Why? Because when you sense the enemy coming, because you're, you have the anointing now, you're able to release the word which pushes back the enemy and constantly is keeping the atmosphere around you with peace, joy, and righteousness in the presence of God. God loves to hear his word, but he wants to see his word backed by his presence. Amen? He didn't come without his presence. Does everybody understand it? He didn't send his word without his presence. Amen? Oh, happy days. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We know that's happening already. Because they have what? And, and according to their own what? Desires. Is desire and emotion? Amen. According to their own lustly desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers that will agree with how they feel and they will turn away their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables but you be watchful in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling does everybody get it fulfill your purpose hallelujah turn the voice of the stranger away. <laughs> Amen? Turn it away. Remove his frequencies of technology. Decreeing keeps you surrounded in an atmosphere of God's presence. Ecclesiastics 1. Oh, 
yes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. In verse 8. It says, all things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has, has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. In other words, we, all the things that you see going on already have already happened. The word says that Jesus was here before the foundations of the world. Our little peanut brain has a hard time with that. So what's happening is just a, a recycle. Just a recycle. That's why things have been rehearsed. There's nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said? See this new? It has already been in ancient times before us. Does everybody see that? So everything, you know, we, we, there's nothing new to God. But to us, recycle comes. It comes in another wind. It comes in another wind of God. It comes in another move of God. See, he releases these things. But for me and you, it becomes new because we, we haven't seen it, but others have seen it already. It's just recycled. Amen? But the spiritual dead can't discern it. Those that are asleep can't discern it. They can't sense what's coming. And they get blown off track. Because they're caught up in life associated with them. Not life associated with Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5. Now let's go to Matthew 7. Prophetic awakening. Matthew seven thirteen. Enter by the narrow gate. How many of y'all know that the narrow gate is a protective gate? It's a protective gate. Wide one, you can, I mean, especially during war and whatever, people will go into the narrow places because they can be covered. Shrap metal can't get them as much, whatever. So this narrow gate is a protective gate. He says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. Easily targeted. A narrow gate is a protective gate because it's hard to get you. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But in they are what? Ravenous wolves. I was listening to an individual that had a prophetic dream. And one of the things that he saw, he said that there was wolves in this field. And this he believed it was one of Satan's servants, was going out into this field and whipping these wolves and stirring them up and stirring them up. These wolves were getting vicious and vicious. They had red eyes and vicious. Then he pointed. And when he pointed, those wolves went. They went into the churches. They were sitting next to the pew sitters. They were looking for all of those that did not have the anointing. Compromisers. They were looking for all of them, these wolves that were sent out. That Jesus was not their full love. And they were speaking to them and deceiving them. And these people were falling and being misled. Walking away from God's presence. Being fulfilled. And these wolves were just eating them up. Wolves in sheep's clothing. 
He said, you'll know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is what? Cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will what? You'll know them. You'll know them. Again, that protective gate. Wolves are being stirred up to attack the forsakers of God's assembling and presence. Let's keep going. Is everybody okay? Verse tw uh, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the anointing. Does everybody get that? On the what? The anointing, which is known as the rock. 2 Corinthians 5. Prophetic awakening. Second Corinthians five. In verse seventeen. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Is everybody okay? Oh, happy day. Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone is in the anointing, hello? He is a what? So what keeps you new? The anointing. So who doesn't want you to get anointed? Who doesn't want you to get in God's presence? Who doesn't want you to assemble? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Some people are still dealing with their old stuff. But they're not in the anointing. Behold, all things have become what? New. Now all things are of God, who, are recon who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors. We are what? Ambassadors. Ambassadors with or without the anointing? With the anointing, or else you're not your ambassador. You're something else. I won't say that word, though. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors by the anointing for who? Christ. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God in his presence, in the anointing. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. New creation in the anointing keeps us awake with discernment. So you can discern. 1 John chapter 2. Praise God. First John chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 15. Do not what? 
Don't love the world. Don't fall in love with the world. Don't be emotionally attached to this world or to things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust, the emotional desires of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have the what? You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I've not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. The anointing teaches you to stay awake. Does everybody understand that? The anointing is always encouraging you to stay awake, to release a decree, to get into God's presence, to worship the anointing. Why? Because the anointing <laughs> loves you. He loves you. His presence loves you. God loves you. He's willing to exchange your presence for His. Hallelujah. I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 5. Glory. Five, five. Likewise, all of you people. <laughs> this is not a black lives matter. This is all human matter. Amen. <laughs> Life matter. Hallelujah. Likewise, all you people, be submissive. Submit yourselves to your elders and respect. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed in humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace, in other words, a plan of escape, to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time by giving you an escape. Casting your cares upon him for he cares for you. Here's the kicker. Be sober. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Maintain your routine. Amen? <laughs> Not a ritual. A routine. Not a ritual. A routine. Religion does, does ritual. We have a routine because it's a war routine. It's a battle routine. Glory. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Maintain your routine. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. Hello? Big mouth. Seeking whom he can deceive and devour and get off track. I told you about those paper airplanes he shoots. So many people got stacks of them. They read them every day. Verse 9. Resist the airplanes. <laughs> Resist him. Resist the voice of the stranger. Resist that secular music. Resist CNN, NSNBC, and all the media of corruption and destruction. Resist the Democratic Party, the liberals, and all the other morons that are anti-Christ trying to kill humanity. Resist their influence. And get registered to vote. If you're not registered, get registered. I've never registered in my life. Then do it. It's your obligation. If you don't know how, get with Viv. Are you registered? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Resist them steadfast where? In the faith that's connected. 
knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brothers and sisters in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you have been, after you suffered, persecuted, you know, going through your stuff, offended enough times, you know, that emotional stuff. <laughs> God uses everything. He loves the push buttons. He's just trying to expose all your poop. <laughs> Dead people don't get offended. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. May the God of all grace, the one who has the escape, after you've suffered a little, perfect, established, strengthened, and then what? Settle you. And to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Thank you for the warning and the prophetic release of the awakening. And it's happening right now. And Lord, help us to put things in priority. Priority. Priority during this time. Priority. Keep us alert. Keep us on our routine. And keep us connected so that we may be sons and daughters that please you and not be deceived in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.